Hey traders and welcome to another edition of Trading Tips brought to you this week by First Hour Trading. FirstHourTrading.com, check them out. These guys are awesome. They'll teach you how to make enough money in the first 59 minutes of trading to take the rest of the day off. FirstHourTrading.com. Let's get into our trading tips this week and it's an exciting one. Um, we're going to get into digesting data and we're going to talk about the BLS jobs report. You may call it the non-farm jobs report, the payroll report. The bottom line is this is the big one that comes out every single month that it's your job to figure out, well, not what it's going to be, but really what the expectations are. And also we're going to talk about what's inside of that report very specifically all right so the report is actually called the employment situation if you type into a search engine bls employment situation that's the report that you're going to get again it is released on the first friday of every month and you can see that there's an asterisk there because sometimes due to holidays or if there's a government shutdown for instance they may delay that but 95 percent of the time this report is delivered the first Friday of every month. Uh, it gives us a reading on the unemployment rate. Um, obviously, as you guys know, in early 2014, um, we saw a big drop in the unemployment rate from 7 to 6.7% on just a very, very minimal jobs increase. We're going to talk about why that happened and uh, how you can sort of follow that along in future reports. You'll also note something there called the labor force participation rate. The participation rate is essentially, the way to think about it is, the number of unemployed people that are looking for work or that are being counted for work. Um, if, if, they're not, if somebody's not counted in the participation rate, they've basically given up on looking for work or found something else to do or going to live back with their parents or retired. So they have dropped out of the labor force and therefore those unemployed are not counted. The lower the participation rate goes, the lower the unemployment um, rate goes because if you think about it, if less and less people are counted as unemployed, even if they aren't employed, the total number of unemployed persons is lower. Um, the report also tells us where jobs are being created and where they're being lost. For instance, if the services industry, maybe bars and restaurants are doing really well, it can help you in your stock searches to maybe focus in that area for growth. Maybe uh, you know machinery or aircraft or automobiles are doing well. Though That can also help you to key in on some companies there perhaps that you want to trade. The key thing is that it's all about comparing it to expectations, and we're going to get into that in a real-world example today. Um, the employment report is all about a comparison. What did analysts and economists expect, and what did the employment uh, report deliver? Quick notes here. The way it's formed is basically simple. Um, or I should say not so simple, but I'm going to hopefully distill and clarify some of the finer points. It's a survey that basically goes out to 60,000 households. In fact, the U.S. Census Bureau conducts a survey every single month and then hands that data over to the Department of Labor Statistics. 60,000 households represent the, you know, the 300 million people that live in the United States of America. They also send out about 500,000 business surveys. Those are done um, online mostly. And again, um, basically it's an algorithm that spits out um, on those surveys of both people and businesses how the labor force and how the um, working force here in America is performing. Real quick note, the snapshot of data that you see every single month, believe it or not, is only for the week of the 12th of every month. So basically what's happening around the 12th of every month, that's the data that you're going to see in the monthly jobs report. So the jobs report has a lot of flaws. Uh, you know, it, it's obviously based upon statistics. They're only grabbing 60,000 homes and hoping to extrapolate that data to equal 300 million people. So there are going to be some disconnects, right? Um, but listen, they've been using this sort of measurement for a long time right now. And if you compare the same measurements over and over and over again, hopefully you're getting real results. Um, again, the key is here expectations compared to what the report showed. Let's take a quick look at a practical review of the report itself and see if we can find some of the report's secrets. Before I even get into the jobs report, I want to point out some flaws that 
occur frequently with the mass media. Take a look here. This is marketwatch.com. I'm not knocking these guys whatsoever. In fact, I use them quite a bit. They are a supplier of great information, but the headlines often get it wrong. This morning, they had completely different headlines for the same story. You can see here they've amended their story. This is a BLS report we're looking at. The typical US worker now spends 4.6 years on the job. But if you scroll down here, and I'll show you what I'm talking about, take a look. The headline read, unemployment rate hits a five-year low. When you click on it, look at what pops up. A completely different title, a completely different story. The bottom line is, the online world enables publishers to change their minds really quick and to fix mistakes very quick. Be careful when you're trading to act upon the headlines without reading the fine print underneath. That's all I'm saying. You saw earlier, take a look again. Let's scroll down. I'll show it to you one more time. The headline had nothing to do with what's being shown there. It said, you know, it said, uh, and, and look, it's, it's even gone. And here it is. Unemployment rate hits a five-year low, but when you clicked on it, it was about the participation rate hitting a 35-year low. That was the big story. That's why it moved lower, um, and they discovered that as they dug deeper. Um, also, expectations. This is another great website, forexfactory.com. It just supplies uh, economic data, dates, and expectations, and you can see the forecast Going into the report, I had for 197,000. These guys had it for 196,000. We only added 74,000 jobs. Okay, and this enables you to sort of chart and take a look at how the patterns are emerging. Um, obviously, we had a much lower add in our jobs um, in December of 2013, and the markets responded in a negative way initially. It's our job to sort of set expectations you know, for this. And remember, when there's a ton of different sort of forces pushing and pulling on this information, it's up to you to do your homework. Let's take a look at the jobs report now in and of itself. And here we go to bls.gov. You can see on the top line here, December unemployment rate declines, payroll employment edges up 74,000 um, persons. Click on the PDF version, that's the easiest. And again, at the onset, this is a long report. And by the way, this is why most people get it wrong. Take a look at this. You literally have 25, 28, gosh, make that 41 pages of information. Most people aren't going to take the time to go through that. And the reality is you don't have to either. But what might help is just to know what to look for in these reports. First of all, the first paragraph in the report tells us a synopsis of what just happened. The unemployment rate declined from 7% to 6.7%. But how the heck can that happen when you literally have, you know, tens of millions of people um, unemployed, right? And we only had 74,000 jobs and it drops 0.3%. Well, the secret, again, comes in that participation rate. We'll look at that soon. Total non-farm payroll um, edged up 74,000 jobs. Here's two charts. Again, typically you'll see the change month over month and the unemployment rate month over month. Let's scroll down here just a bit to look at the goodies. On page two, three, and four are some of the best points of data for you as a consumer to read in and learn about and understand really what's going on right here. So we dropped, um, you can see, the number of unemployed persons declined by 490,000 to 10.4 million in December, and the unemployment rate declined by 0.3 percentage points to 6.7 percent. So, take a look at this. The total number of unemployed persons dropped by 500,000 people. But how can that be when we only added 74,000 jobs, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny when you I, I chuckle when I when I read these because so, so you're telling me almost 430 million people just magically got jobs they didn't those people left okay they left the participation rate and take a look right here the civilian labor force participation rate declined by 0.2 percentage points to 62.8 percent in December so basically 62.8 percent of the public available to work, non-retirees, non-injured, um, uh, and no persons in an institution, 62% of our people in America who are ready and ready to work are not being counted in this survey. Okay. Pretty interesting. It was that drop that created the big drop in employment. As you go through this, you'll be able to find data 
all about you know where jobs are headed. Um, as I mentioned, pages two, three, and four are sort of where you're gonna find all the goodies. Here's page three, take a look at this. This is my favorite page. Here we can see the sectors broken down. Employment and retail trade rose by 55,000. Wholesale trade added 15,000. Professional and business services continued uptrend only up 19,000 in December. Manufacturing also trending up about 9,000. Mining, healthcare. Now take a look here. Here's where the shift happens. The latter part of this, of page three, shows us where the declines are happening. Healthcare employment changed little in December. Well, we lost 6,000. Information technology and information fell by 12,000. Construction fell by 16,000. So for you guys looking at housing and looking at those trends there, the real trends underneath here in the jobs report show us that there is actually weakness in construction. So the point of this is, guys, take a couple seconds, at least read up to page five of this report to get the real story if you're looking to figure out what's happening in the marketplace today. All right, that's the bottom line. Remember, here are the key facts. Number one, don't believe the headlines. Look deeper into the report and know where to look. BLS.gov is where you find the reports. Number two, what were the expectations going into the report? Are analysts looking for higher you know, unemployment or lower unemployment? Right now in early 2014, as I'm filming this, you know, the markets would like to see unemployment relatively stable. Why? Because if unemployment drops, if more and more people get jobs faster than expected, well, that could mean the Fed removing stimulus. Believe it or not, the markets actually like a good amount of unemployment. I know that sounds crazy, but that generally equals um, a, a cheaper dollar and better economic stimulus or more favorable monetary policy. All right. And again, third, know what you're looking at. Don't be afraid to ask questions and always, always, always double check your data. We'll see you back here next week for the next edition of Trading Tips. And remember, if you like what you see, please check out our sponsor, firsthourtrading.com. You could sign up for a free 30-day no obligation trial, firsthourtrading.com. Check them out. I'm Jared Levy. We'll see you here next week.